Western Digital have recently launched a new range of NVMe SSDs. These include the SN500 Blue and SN750 Black, one of which comes with an EK-designed heatsink to minimise throttling under extreme loads. We were keen to see how these drives stack up in the real world. Does a heatsink really make a difference? Well, let's find out. For reference, our test system featured an Intel i9-9820X CPU, 32GB of Corsair Vengeance 3200MHz RAM and an Asus ROG Strix X299E motherboard. First up is the synthetic benchmarks. These are great to test the theoretical performance of the drives. For this test, we've used Crystal Dismark 6.0.2. As you can see, all of the SSDs offer very close to the advertised speeds, with the SN750s being at the top of the range and churning out some seriously high speeds. Now for some real-world testing. For reference, we've also added a big brand 2.5-inch SATA SSD and a high-end NVMe SSD for comparison to the SN750s. We tested the drives by copying and pasting a large 127GB folder full of MP4 videos, which should offer the highest real-world speeds that you'd see. And then also a 32GB game folder, in this case, Armour 3. These have large amounts of smaller files which can significantly slow down the process, so we expect this to be slower. In the video test, initially the SN750 and big brand SSD are neck and neck, with the cheaper SN500 trailing. But once each SSD's buffer is saturated, we get to see the real speed of each drive. This is where the results get surprising. The SN750 maintains a solid 1.5 gigabytes per second, twice as fast as the others. It finishes the copy in almost half the time too, but the initially slower SN500 maintains 740 megabytes per second compared to our reference NVMe drive at 625. This means that the SN500 actually catches and passes the reference drive and also finished before it. The SATA SSD is really starting to look slow in comparison. In our game files copy, the SN750 again races away, finishing over 10 seconds before anything else. This time, our reference drive finishes in second, beating the SN500 Blue by a few seconds. This is a good result for the SN500 though, as it's a significantly cheaper drive than our big brand one. Again, the SATA SSD is significantly slower. Now there's the question of the EK heatsink version of the SN750. Would it reduce or prevent throttling under extreme workloads? Well, let's find out. To test, we constantly copied our 127 gigabyte video folder to each drive, with both drives being passively cooled only. As soon as it finished, we deleted the files and repasted them back to the drive again, giving it no time to cool down in between. The results speak for themselves. After the first pass, neither drive had shown any throttling, but the standard SN750 was reading 73 degrees C, whilst the EK version was at just 52 degrees. On the second pass, the standard SN750 hit 80 degrees, which is right at its thermal limit, whilst the EK version was only up to 59 degrees. On the third pass, the standard SN750 hit 81 degrees on two occasions, resulting in performance throttling measures that would then continue to get worse going forward. As for the EK version, well, after 10 passes, we gave up, with it seemingly showing no more than 72 degrees C. So overall, we are seriously impressed with the Western Digital's new NVMe drives. The SN500 Blue offers a serious performance boost over a SATA SSD, and in some cases can match higher level competitors. Given its price point, that's great news. The SN750, on the other hand, offers an overall real-world performance that's right up there with the very best. The EK-cooled SN750 maximizes that performance and, in our opinion, is the best-looking NVMe drive on the market. You can buy yours now at scan.co.uk. And don't forget, if you like this video, hit the like button. And if you want to see more like it, then subscribe to our channel.